What is up everyone? It is almost time for the new set, uh, The Wilds of Eldraine. So we're bringing to today the top 10 list of the new cards that I think are going to make a big impact in standard and maybe even older formats like Historic. Um, I also share some honorable mentions. There really were a lot of cards that were good. I wouldn't say there was a lot of cards that were like insanely good. Um, but you'll see some of the, the the really good ones in the top 10 list. So yeah, let's get into it. Well, starting with number 10, we have Mosswood Dread Knight. Uh, this is just a pretty solid card in... Uh, it's going to have to be in a green-black deck to make the most use of it. But it's a 2-mana, 1 and a green for a 3-2 Trample, um, which is just average, right? Just average, but it has the ability that when it dies, you can cast it from the graveyard as an adventure until the end of your next turn. So, uh, basically, when it dies, you have one turn to cast the adventure side, draw a card, and lose one life, uh, which is one in a black. And then, of course, after you cast the adventure side of a card, the creature gets exiled, and you can cast that in the future. So, you can kind of keep recurring this card over and over again as long as you don't wait, you know, too long to cast the adventure side of it. Um, so, especially late game, this is kind of going to be like a 4 mana, lose 1 life, draw a card, and get a 3-2 Trampler. Um, which is just pretty solid. It's kind of like the underdog that we see now in the mono black decks. Um, so I don't see why this card is, would not be good. The only downside is it's in green-black, which hasn't really been much of a deck uh, for a long time. Now, if there's some sort of John deck, this would fit right in there, so we'll have to see. Maybe, it, maybe it'll make a deck good enough to play, especially John. I think John is the most likely candidate. candidate. All right, uh, moving on, number nine. Um, just sharing one of them, but we have a cycle of man lands, as they call them, uh, lands which turn into creatures. This is the blue-red one, and I think this is the one that has the most potential, in my opinion. Um, there's also a white-red one that is quite good, but um, this one is the cheapest. So for a red and a blue, it can turn into a creature, a 2-1 blue and red elemental creature. And as long as it's your turn, this creature has first strike, and is still land, and then whenever it attacks, you scry one. So 2 mana becomes a 2-1 with first strike and scry one. Um, so pretty solid. It is a land that comes in tapped, but it does tap for both red and blue. So uh, I think it's some sort of spell-heavy, you know, red-blue deck, uh, which maybe doesn't run a lot of creatures, but has just like a few really good value wizards or something like that, and a lot of uh, counter spells and burn spells and stuff like that. I think this one could be really good, definitely as like a late-game win con. Or even just mid-game to put in a little bit of extra damage. First strike is pretty hard to deal with. So, uh, yeah. Potentially seems pretty good to me. The white-red one also is good. And it grows each time it attacks. So, uh, the only downside is that white-red is not often good enough to be playable. Uh, but blue-red is. So, that's why I, I think this one is probably the best one of the cycle. All right. Moving on. Number eight. We have Lord Skitter's Blessing. This is a one and a black for an enchantment. Whenever it enters the battlefield, create a wicked roll token, which basically says uh, an enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one. And when it goes to the graveyard, then the opponent loses one life. So um, that's that's the first part of the card. Uh, and then the second part, at the beginning of your, your draw step, if you control an enchanted creature, you lose one life and draw an additional card. So why is this on my top... 10 list. Uh, basically, this is one of the only enchantments that creates another enchantment. Um, and on top of that, it uh, lets you draw as cards for enchantments that you have. So I think in an aura type deck, this is going to be quite good, maybe even good enough to play in Historic because um, it's and it, you cast the enchantment, which can trigger some effects like uh, SRAM or. Uh, core Spirit Dancer, and then it creates an aura, which can also trigger, uh, I think Core Spirit Dan Dancer triggers when an aura enters the battlefield, so this one would trigger for that. So triggers both things, gives you two enchantments, which uh, will help a lot of your like synergy cards that want to have X number of enchantments. Um, and then it's going to draw you cards too, which is also annoying for the opponent, so they're going to want to get rid of this. 
Uh, in this standard format, we do have ways to get rid of enchantments using the bargain mechanic. So if you start to lose too much life to this, you can sack this as part of the bargain. Um, and on top of that, you're getting two enchantments that you can sack. So that's even, you know, more like potential for the card. So that's why I think this is really good. I think it will be good in standard in the in black, white aura type deck and also in historic in a black, white aura type deck. All right. Number seven, uh, we are at devouring sugar maw. This is just a solid creature. We had the um, um, trying to blank on it. Something beast, love struck beast in the last Eldraine set. Um, this is a little bit worse than love struck beast. Uh, the that one had a one mana adventure which created a one one, and then a three mana adventure which made a five five, and it could only attack if you had a one one on your battlefield. Uh, so this is a little bit worse than that, but still pretty close and um uh, has other upsides that that one didn't have uh, basically two mana one and a white instant instant that's also big uh adventure you create a one one white human token and a food token so you get two tokens for two mana uh at instant speed which is pretty good a lot of cards in this set want you to have tokens they want you to have artifacts uh so both of those are advantages and then the creature side of it, four mana, menace trample. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may sacrifice an artifact, enchantment, or token if you don't tap Devouring Sugar Maw. And it's a six, six power menace and trample. So very good on stats, uh, abilities, menace and trample, both pretty good. Means it's very, very hard for the opponent to block it or stop it from getting through with the damage. Um, of course, they can kill it with go for the throat or something like that. But uh, you've already got other advantages out of that with your creature and your food token. Uh, so it may not even matter that they wasted that. It's always pretty much always going to be a, at least a two for one. And then um, the, the, the condition to attack with it, you have to sack a artifact, enchantment, or token. Uh, there's actually a couple, especially in black and white, there's some cards that come in with a curse or a token on them. Uh, and so sacking that enchantment would actually be good for you. Um, we also just saw the Skittermaw's Blessing or whatever. Uh, that one, you know, you might want to sack it at some point. There's the Phyrexian Arena, which, you know, you might want to sack that at some point. So it's not that much of a downside to have to sacrifice some of these things uh, to to the Sugar Maw. And, you know, you swing in a couple times, the opponent's going to be dying. So they're going to have to deal with it at some point. So that's why I think this one has a pretty good potential to be good. All right, number six, Song of Totens, to, Totentans, Totentans, I guess. That's a, a weird name, but a uh, card is very strong. It's X and a red, and you create X, 1-1 one, one black red creature tokens with this creature can't block. And then creatures you control gain haste until end of turn. So even just a one mana, if you just cast it for one mana, give all your creatures haste, could be potentially good game winning in some situations. Um, but the fact that you can kind of make this into, um, I think it's called Reckless Reinforcements. Uh, there was a card back in, uh, way back in Ravnica. Sorry, I don't know why I'm drawing so many blanks today. Um, back in the Ravnica set, which would create two 1-1 one, one human creature tokens, and then it gave all your creatures haste. That's all a lot of play. That was really good. Uh, so, you know, that was four mana. I think that might have been instant speed. I'm not sure, but um, still, this one is pretty much on par with that. You can make three rats for four mana, give a haste, give your other creatures haste as well. Um, you know, if you have any sort of anthems on the field already, you can just make a bunch of a bunch of rats, like five rats, for pretty cheap, and potentially win the game from that. Uh, maybe you have some go wide spells. I know there's some that are like deal X damage and gain X life, where X is the number of creatures you have. So anyway, it's one of the best go wide spells we have in a long time, and it gives haste on top of that. So she just seems very very good, and it's gonna be played somewhere for sure. All right. Next up, number five, is the Regal Bunicorn. 
Um, so this is one in a white. Uh, it's just a solid card. It, it's uh, power and toughness are equal to the number of non-land permanents you control. So it comes in, it's a 1-1 one, one by default, and then if you have anything else on the battlefield, it's going to get big. So you got some food tokens, you got some uh, creature tokens, you got some other creatures. If you have any sort of battlefield presence, uh, this creature is going to be 2-2, you 3-3, know, 4-4, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, 5 So there's no way this card is bad. Will it be amazing? I don't know about that, but it will not be bad for sure. Um, and there's some crazy things you could do. Instant speed, like we just saw back on the Sugar Maw, you can make a, a creature and a food at instant speed. You could cast that, pump this guy up, do some crazy combat stuff with that, um, kind of out of the blue. And yeah, it's just, a, it's just a really solid card that gets bigger, and it's going to be scary, and the opponent definitely has to kill it. So uh, yeah. It's a good card. It's probably going to see play in almost every white deck, I would imagine, just because it's just really bit really good. All right, number four, we're at the Royal Treatment. So this is a can not cantrip. This is a protection spell, a green mana protection spell, instant speed creature target creature you control gains hexproof until end of turn, and create a royal royal token attached to that creature. Uh, we've seen this kind of effect similar effect in the past uh snakeskin veil for example was very similar to this uh, also slip out the back kind of similar it's closer to snakeskin veil which was give a creature hexproof and a 1-1 counter um this is a little bit better than snakeskin veil except for in maybe hardened scale deck uh but this gives it the creature 1-1 one, one, and ward 1 so it's even a little bit better than snakeskin veil um on top of that, it gives you an aura token. So there might be some decks where aura or aura based decks that you know get some draw card from that or something like that because you you put an aura onto the battlefield. Um, so yeah, I think it's just upside snakeskin veil with upside. So pretty solid, very good in some sort of tempo-y green or green white auras deck or even just mono green possibly. So yeah, I think it's gonna see play. All right, number three is Feral Encounter. Um, this is a card that could make Mono Green good again, and it's green green, so a little bit hard to cast, but not that crazy. And you look at the top five cards of your library. You exile a creature card from among them, put the rest in your library in a random order. Uh, you may cast the exile card this turn, so you have to cast the card this turn. That's that's the main downside. And then, at the beginning of your next combat phase this turn, target creature you control deals combat damage equal to its power to up to one target creature you don't control. So, uh, it's like a bite effect, which is normally one in a green to do bite, uh, where you deal damage from your creature to another creature without fighting. So, that's good, you know, two mana bite effect, always pretty good. Um... However, this one also has the, the upside that it gets you a card from the top five cards of your library. So, yeah, it's kind of a two for one, very solid. You always want to have some fight spells or bite spells in your green decks anyway, because uh, that's how you have removal. And so the fact that this also draws you a card is just really solid. So if you can play this maybe on turn three or four, you find a one or two mana creature in your mono green aggro deck. Um, you play the creature, and then you get to immediately remove something on the opponent's side. So two for one, pretty solid. Late game, you know, you can get bigger creatures. Um, so it's kind of like searches for your threats and also remove something. So just really solid. One of the best fight slash bite spells we've ever seen. And so there's no way this is not a good card. Just matter of fact is if Mono Green can be a good deck or not. That's the only question. Alrighty, number two, we got Elvish Archivist. Archivist, I want to say Arcanist, but it's Archivist. Um, this is a card which I think has potential to be in Historic, though Orcish Bowmasters is a little bit scary right now um, against this card. But the power level of this card is very high, um, and the downside is you, it gets removed. Like, that's the only downside. So, upside... 
Uh, so yeah, let's read the card. It's one and a green for a zero one. Whenever one or more artifacts enter the battlefield under your control, put two plus one plus one counters on the Elvish Archivist. This ability occurs only once each turn. And whenever one or more enchantments enter the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Again, this ability triggers only once each turn. So this could see play in some sort of auras, enchantment-based deck, green-white enchantments, for example, uh, to draw you cards. We already see, you know, there's a few other ones like this in Historic that see a lot of play. Um, the upside to this one is it also works for artifacts. So, you know, if you just like incidentally have a few artifacts in your uh, enchantment deck, then like Nettlesist, for example, Nettlesist is one that often sees plays in the aura decks. Um, it's an artifact, so it's going to trigger this. It's going to make it grow to be a 2-3. Um, you know, you might have some enchantments that create some sort of like blood token or I don't know. Yeah, like blood fountain or something like that which is an artifact there might be ways to have enchantments that create an artifact in which case you get both triggers you draw a card and you put two counters on it uh, so it just seems really solid and i think in standard definitely it's going to be a powerhouse because it's one of the only real good aura synergies we have uh, especially in green it's a very solid and i think green white auras could be a thing because of this card um and there's also a lot of incidental artifacts in those colors as well. So, yeah, seems really good in both standard and historic. So that's why that's the number two. And getting to number one is Slumbering Keep Card. You might be shocked. A common card that I'm putting at my number one spot. Um, why is this one so good? Okay. Standard, not positive. But Historic, I think this has potential to be really good. Uh, we saw earlier the enchantment, which creates another aura. Uh, so it creates two enchantments. And it was only two mana, and it draws you cards. And so you cast that whenever an enchantment enters your battlefield under your control. Scry 1. So that's the first ability on Slumbering Keep Guard. Um, and this is a one white, just a white mana to cast this for a 1-1. One, one. So whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield, you scry 1. So if we cast that enchantment we saw earlier you scry two one two times and uh then on turn three you can pay two and a white and slumbering keep card gets plus one plus one until end of turn for each enchantment you control so the way i see it is you cast this on turn one the opponent you know if they don't kill it you're going to get some really good upside off this. Either A, you're going to get a bunch of scries throughout the game, which help you fix your draws. Um, and then, you know, probably not turn three, but maybe turn four or five or six, you're going to activate this ability and you're going to pump it from a 1-1 one, one into like a 7-7 seven, seven, or, you know, late game. It could even be bigger than that because they're just going to have all these incidental enchantments on your battlefield. Um, and then each aura you cast is also probably pumping your creature, so yeah, it's going to be almost like a core spirit dancer type thing. I mean, it's not drawing you cards, but it is getting very, very large quickly. So um, I think this is definitely a big payoff for white-green auras, white-black auras, um, and I really do think it could be seen play in Historic because we don't have a lot of one-drops in Historic that benefits so much from auras being cast. Uh, and other enchantments as well being cast so I think this could fit right in there you know you've got this you've got like mother of runes you've got SRAM you've got core spirit dancer and uh, it's just another really good threat for your enchantments to go on to so yeah so that's my top 10 those are the ones that I think are really good um, we'll quickly quickly go through some honorable mentions uh, I know this has already gone a little bit long so let's just go through those really quick um, and then next week we're going to have uh the historic cards that i'm looking forward to as well even though a lot of these were historic playable all right let's take a look so honorable mention charming scoundrel good card creates a treasure hasty creature um treasures are always dangerous in standard so i think this one's pretty good oh that's sorry um spiteful hex mage a one mana 
for a 3-2 that comes in with an aura attached to it. Yes, it's a negative aura, but as we talked about, there are ways to remove the negative auras. Um, so you're looking at probably a 1-mana 3-2 with some upside in some senses. Uh, Ruby, Daring Tracker. It's a 2-mana mana dork that has haste, so you can cast something immediately on the turn you play it. And then late game, it becomes like a 3-4 in a lot of cases. And then Rowan, of course, very good. Whenever you take damage, you lose life, you get to make your spells cheaper. It also is a good body, 4-2 with menace uh, for 3 mana. So Rowan is very nice as well. And then uh, Red Cap Gutter Dweller, 4 mana. You get 3 bodies, a 3-3, three, three, a 1-1, one, one, and a 1-1. One, one. Um, it has menace, and it also has a sack ability to make it grow bigger uh, and draw you cards. So... This one is really, really good, to be honest, but um, I just wasn't sure if there was a good home for this card, but we'll have to see. Maybe in the rat deck. Um, Monstrous Rage. This one is also, yeah, honorable mention, very close to being in my top 10. Uh, one mana, basically plus three, plus one, and uh, Trample. And then the one, plus one, plus one, and Trample ability stays on the creature after that as an aura. So, um... It's basically like the best pump spell we've ever seen, I think. Uh, the, I mean, the only downside is it can still be blown out, but if it doesn't get blown out, it's it's a really good one mana pump spell at instant speed. Um, Ready the charmed apple of the charmed apple. This is a good aura payoff. Uh, if if you cast the negative auras on the opponent's creatures, they can't attack you, and then also you drain them for X life, where it's the number of auras. Just a very solid payoff card. Uh, and that's it. Those were the honorable mentions. So let me know if I missed anything. If there are other cards that you think are just going to be bomb power level cards in standard or historic. Um, and yeah, like I said, coming up soon, we're going to have the historic top 10 list and uh, some new brews. And then the streamer event is coming up on the 31st. So yeah, hope you can be there and check that out. Until next time, take care, have fun, and see you.